Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. And today, we're gonna to take a look at the iPad Pro 11 inch M1. Now, the main reason I'm looking at this is this has been my iPad that I have used since I bought it in the start of 2022. Now this particular one with the M1 did come out in 2021 and it is a great bit of kit. And there are some arguments now is that even with the new really powerful M4 chips out there in an iPad, is that really needed? And I think that's the, the main thing. This thing is still lightning quick. It does everything you need. The camera, okay, you know, it's not the best camera in the world, but it's still great. And I think the main aspect is, is that on an iPad, what do you really need a camera for? You're not going to be holding this up at a concert, trying to film. It's, what do you use it for? Scanning documents, taking quick photos of stuff around a room when you've got your iPad in your, in your hand. It's not meant to be high quality photos. And it do, does still have the wide angle lens. It does still have all the lenses on the back like an iPhone did. But I think the main aspect is, is that this, you can now pick this up brand new for about £650, roughly. And depending on obviously place to place that you go. So think of the deals that you can now get on second hand ones of these. And look, I think when I say brand new, I mean in the UK, places like John Lewis and, and places like that that still sell these. And I think eBay, you can still pick them up for some decent prices. There are some ones of the higher volumes of um, storage still going up at about £650 secondhand, but they do have a lot more storage in them. Now, all of these come with eight gigabytes of RAM up to, I think it's 512 gigabytes. Any of the ones that are kind of one terabyte, two terabytes are then meant to have 16 gigabytes of RAM. So this, this particular one is just 128 gigabytes. I don't really use my iPad for much storage. I use a lot of the cloud uh, stuff like I, I use OneDrive a lot. Um, and it's just nice and easy because I can upload it to OneDrive on here. If I'm doing some editing on the go or anything like that, then I can just upload it to my OneDrive and I can finish it off at my desk and my computer later on in the evening. And look, in terms of everything it does, this is still supported. The M1 chips, as you know, have only just ended. If we're looking at a time scale of things, if it's come out in 2021, Apple normally unfully support their products after about seven years. So we still have time left with this. And I still think this should still be a massive contender if you're looking at buying an iPad coming into 2025. I really do. And I think this is most, this is what most people are just going to need. It's stylish, it's thin. Obviously, I've got this case on it, but it's thin. It is a great, great piece of kit, and it's quick. It, it, it gives you absolutely everything that you need in an iPad. Now, one of my favorite things, obviously, I've got the second gen um, Apple Pencil here, and it's great. It's great for working with this. Yes, it works perfectly, drawing, it still works fantastic. As I said, all of the apps are still very fully compatible. So it doesn't matter what type of drawing app, designing app that you want to use, you will be able to use it on this. Now, my favorite thing, and one of the most things that I have recently started using all the time is, yes, DaVinci Resolve works on this iPad and you can fully edit your videos. You can export them. And then I normally, as I said, upload them to my OneDrive. I normally export it directly there. So, I, I sorry, I transfer it directly onto there. So it's then not taking up space here. I think, yes, um, when it comes to some of the uh, storage issues, you can use a lot of storage up by transferring videos onto it and, you know, using DaVinci Re Resolve and exporting it. But as long as you keep clearing it up after every edit, you'll be fine. And has everything that you need. You can uh, you can edit 
your um, shorts videos on here from full time, you know, from full videos. I like it. And, I, and that is probably one of my favorite bits. And this M1 chip still takes it like a champ. Um, okay, the export times are probably not going to be as quick as the M4. But do you really want to be spending? I think, I think some of the M4 Pro chips, they're over a thousand pounds. Some of them over fifteen hundred pounds when you start upgrading the storage and bits and pieces. It's crazy money. That, that is really crazy money. And this for nearly it's going to be nearly a thousand pound less than some of the the, the top end ones because i think there's some of them that are like nearly one thousand six hundred pounds and you know if you can pick this up for nearly a thousand pound less so not let's say 900 you know 850 900 pound less that's a lot of money saved and this is going to give you absolutely everything that you need so guys in terms of um actual capability of this it's an ipad it's a pro it has everything that it needs okay as i said camera isn't the isn't as good as the m4 ones um and some of the you know the m2 m3 chip ones okay they're starting to come down in price in second hand stuff but you know it's one of those it's one of those things isn't it it's value for money and this will give you absolutely everything you need the speed of it is is not going to cause you any issues you can do everything that you need to do and look the, with the light kind of video editing and stuff with DaVinci Resolve, it opens up a whole new genre of things to be able to do. But still, you're going to have a laptop, aren't you? If you're going to be video, video editing and bits and pieces and doing 4K video edits, then you are going to be using a laptop. You're not going to be using one of these. And I think that's the main, the main thing. iPads are made for light work you know, small design, you know, designing aspects. It's not made for full, you know, you know, you don't have your iPad as a full video editing machine, even though with DaVinci Resolve, it probably has made it into one of them now. So yeah, guys, look, let me know your thoughts. Would you consider still buying the M1 iPad Pro into 2025? I know I would. I don't plan on upgrading this anytime soon. It does everything that I absolutely need it to. I have my, my MacBook as well. I have my main gaming computer. I don't need anything else. Okay, if you're planning on using an iPad as a laptop, then buy a laptop. If you're spending that much money, buy yourself a MacBook. Definitely. You know, that some of the, um, the, the Airs, you know, the, the, the iPad Air, uh, sorry, the, some of the MacBook Airs, the new M3 chips and M4 chips are fantastic in the Airs. And it just wipes away the need of that power in one of these. It really does. So, guys, let me know. What are you going to do? Do you have an iPad M1? Do you have one of the upgraded versions of these? Let me know your thoughts. Do you think that this is still a good bang for its buck. I do. I personally do think it is. So guys, look, let me know in the comments below. Please do like the video. Please do subscribe to the channel. Have a lot of video and video ideas coming out very, very soon. Um, if you missed the, the videos earlier on in this week, we did a few more reviews on some other bits of technology that I just got in a TikTok shop haul, which let me know your thoughts on them. I was actually very, very, very surprised. So guys, thank you so much. And I will catch you in the next one.